I wonder how we got this far I wonder how and where we are I wonder how to get where we're going I wonder how to share this Well, we're finally doing it. Packed up all my stuff and we're gonna go camping again. Oh man, it's so weird when you've been wearing uh, when you've been wearing earplugs and you take them off. Everything sounds so loud. <laughs> yeah, it's been forever since I've had a chance to do this. But I had a weird summer. I had planned on coming up to these areas that weren't real hot and camping and stuff. But beginning of the summer, I bought a truck and then I had a freak accident in that truck and totaled it then i spent the rest of the summer trying to find a new truck basically so every weekend was kind of consumed by the hope that something i wanted would show up for sale so then finally once i uh once i actually found my truck my job kind of changed a little bit and it got more stressful and uh just kind of having motivated it feels pretty good to get back out here it's pretty weird though it feels weird i have a lot more vertigo on these uh, on these roads, it's kind of harder to harder to make these corners. But uh, I'm doing something today I've been wanting to do for a while, which is um, camp and do a little hunting. I mean, I can't can't exactly do any like proper big game hunting, but I can go out and shoot some small game animals, right? So I'm returning to the place where I uh, I went almost a year ago. I think it was in November, uh, and it was one of my best camping videos I did. Today I'm going to probably try to get the same campsite I had last time and uh, I've done something a little different instead of uh, leaving in the afternoon and trying to arrive before sunset. I've actually left before the sun rose and I'm trying to get to my campsite hopefully by 10 o'clock so I have enough time to go out in the woods and, uh, and find myself a squirrel. So then we're going to cook it, we're going to eat it and then, uh, I don't know, drink whiskey and shoot guns maybe? <laughs> I have no idea. So this, this is the Sierra Anca Wilderness, which is located uh, just northeast of Roosevelt Lake. Forest Road 288 goes all the way through here, and if you follow it far enough, it'll take you to the town of Young. So I'm on 288 now. This is a, it's a pretty good road to camp off of because it's, it's lightly traveled, and uh, there's also a lot of hunting here. People come up here and elk hunt, deer hunt. You just pull off into the side of the road and camp, and uh, then in the morning go out and try to shoot your game animals. But I love this area. I think it's absolutely stunning. It is really cold. <laughs> it's been a while since I've come up to an altitude like this. My bike seems to be running okay, but I haven't stopped and uh, let it idle yet. So I'm sure the uh, I'm sure the oxygen deprivation is having an effect. Last time I was up here, I uh, almost couldn't start my motorcycle in the morning because the the air was so thin. My uh, my bike wasn't tuned for it. I have a way to adjust it now, which I'll go over later. <laughs> For now, I'm trying to find a place to camp so I can head out into the woods and uh, start looking for something to shoot. Ah, that's the spot that I stayed in last time.
Well, this might prove a little more challenging than I expected. There's a guy parked over there and I wanted that spot. So maybe I'll drive back in a little bit and see if he's gone. I think he was just walking the road. May have found something. Must say I've never had this much trouble finding a private place to camp. This will be a first. And it's 9.15 in the morning. I'm telling you, I'm getting pretty deep now. I have no idea where this goes, but it's well taken care of. Oh, look at this. Oh man, I think I found it. Oh yeah, baby. Perfect. I do need to uh, position my bike a little differently though. Well, I complain about having a heavy motorcycle. This is exactly the situation that I'm meaning to complain about because you're on an incline, it's unlevel, you can't touch the ground, your bike's heavy. This is where it becomes a pain in the ass. Well, I hope nobody comes up this road later. I guess this is it. Let me see if my bike is idling correctly. See, last time I came up here, the altitude was causing this bike to basically barely operate and it would just stall out. In the morning, I had a hell of a time starting it. So what I've done is I've actually created this little knob that it attaches to my mixture screw via this little flex shaft. And uh, I can adjust my mixture just by turning that. So I wanna get it right so that tomorrow I don't have any problems. So the RPM went up a little bit right there. So that's half a turn from where I was. I was, I am running uh, two turns out uh, in Phoenix. And I think that is pretty much the best setting I've found so far. Yeah, so this is now, I guess this is one and a half turns out because I just turned it in half a turn. But anyway, I've mentioned this in my last video. I haven't shown this as like, I haven't shown it recently. This is actually sort of the, what the final product will look like. And I'll be selling them pretty soon. Or at least I'll be trying to sell them. Because once I thought it up, I realized, oh, this is actually, it's actually pretty cheap. For me, anyway. I'll announce that when it happens. I'm not taking any pre-orders for those. Because, uh, I don't want to have to organize that. <laughs> Well, if you're new to my content, hmm, and you haven't watched all of my camping videos, this is my bag. Put all my camping stuff in here. Uh, just after that last video, the last camping video I made, uploaded a video where I went over all my gear. So, if you want to see that, like what all of this is and how I pack this stuff, um, go find that video, because I'm not going to go over it. I keep getting the feeling that I'm not alone. Could be because I'm so close to this road. I don't know, just feeling comfortable. Somebody who just drove by on, uh, on an ATV that were hunting and stuff, but I don't know. I think I'm just too close to the road, but I'm just gonna have to deal with it. So this is a Savage Model 24 combination rifle. It is a over-under break action rifle with a 410 on the bottom and a 22 on the top. Well, I guess I'm gonna go out in the woods now.
I haven't seen or heard anything. Ground is littered in these fucking pine needles, so that might have something to do with it. Every step I take is pretty, uh, pretty audible. I don't know. I'm not sure what to do. I didn't really want to have to walk down the road with a GoPro and a rifle, but I might have to. We might have to go somewhere else. Oh man, so a lot of people, I think, uh, kind of don't understand squirrel hunting and things like that. They're animals that, you know, people generally don't look at as food, especially living in cities and stuff. We see them in our yards and in our, in our public areas and they're fat because people feed them and they're cute. But when you look at hunting and uh, the different types of things you can go and hunt, there's, there's basically, there's two categories. Uh, there's big game, which is, uh, you know, deer and elk and pigs and stuff like that. And then there's small game, which is things like rabbits and squirrels and quail, things of that nature. Um, and I think people, I mean, quail, that sounds delicious. You know, that sounds like a bird you'd want to eat. But when you look at a rabbit or a squirrel, people tend to think, oh, no, those are my furry friends. And so they seem less appetizing. But it's like on a trip like this, uh, I don't have the resources or the or the people to go and do a big game hunt right now. And I'm on a fucking motorcycle for Christ's sake. So uh, small game is is ideal. And squirrels taste delicious if you cook it right. I mean, if you don't season it at all, it kind of tastes like rubber. You can pan fry it, season it, and pan fry it, and bread it, and make like a like a chicken wing type thing out of it. Or you can do what I do, which is I like to drop it in stews that are like you know heavily flavored with broth, and then let it cook that way because then it will pick up a lot of the flavor of the broth. It's also just, it's one of those things you can just go out in the woods and do. Like, you're, you're probably going to be successful. You know what I mean? So you can come out here and then just go out in the woods and, and acquire some protein. And I like that about it, you know? You're guaranteed to get some action. You don't have to sit still all day. I mean, you, can, you still gotta be pretty quiet. Don't get me wrong. It's not as easy as you probably think it is, which I'll demonstrate when I fail today. I mean, I know I don't really expect to see squirrels from the road, but I don't know, man. I'm just, maybe I'm just being lazy, but I'm trying to find an easier spot to walk in and, and hunt. This whole area is fenced off, though. This says private land, so can't do that. I mean, there's some other stuff I thought we can go do if I uh, ended up not hunting squirrels. I just feel like I should have been out here way earlier. Man, I feel like this video is really falling off the rails. There's a little area for hiking I wanted to investigate because I want to come back here and hike this. So let's go do that because that's what I feel like doing right now instead of like sitting in the woods silently for hours hoping to make a video about this. Whoa, it's like an actual summer camp. Holy shit. There's kids out here playing basketball. God, when you think you're in the woods, man, you come across kids playing basketball. <laughs> I'm gonna have to tape up this windscreen nut. That's probably the only tool I forgot was the only Allen wrench that tightens up that nut, or that screw rather, because my uh, my folding set doesn't in front of that bracket between that and speedometer. I know for sure I didn't bring that Allen wrench. Well, it's a nice little drive. This is, <laughs> the leaves out here are beautiful. In the early 1950s to late 1970s, this area was a uranium mining district. Soils may contain low-level radiation at Cascade and Creekside. Camping is no longer allowed at these sites, although day use is permitted. Mine shafts and tunnel entrances pose physical and radiation hazards. Stay away from the mines in the area. Be aware that rock in this area may contain uranium. A permit is required for removal of forest products from a national forest lands. Holy shit. Well, we're not looking for a mine shaft. I didn't know I was camping in a place that's radioactive. Not sure if I even want radioactive squirrel meat anymore. Well, that's fun. <laughs> I actually read that like yesterday when I was reading about this area, trying to figure out what's on this road actually, but I didn't bother to really like write any of it down because it is pretty interesting and it would make a good topic. That's crazy. That wasn't even that long ago, 1950.
Come on.